Starting your own business is exciting at any stage, from beginning as a freelancer to growing into a big company. As your business gets bigger, it's important to sort out the legal stuff, like forming an S corporation. This might sound complicated, but it's actually easier than you think, even though there's some tricky paperwork and legal terms involved. By the way, if you would like to get help in starting your own S corp in Illinois, then make sure to sign up with Northwest Registered Agent by clicking my affiliate link down in the description of this video. They're professionals and they'll be able to help you out with any legal questions you have. Plus, clicking on my link doesn't cost you anything extra and it helps me support the channel. And with that in mind, let's get started. Before we can even talk about S Corps, we need to lay the groundwork with an LLC or limited liability company. This is your business's foundation, providing flexibility and protection. Think of an LLC like a sturdy, protective case for your smartphone. It's there to keep your business safe and sound. First things first, let's talk about forming an LLC in Illinois. Process starts with choosing a name for your LLC. This name needs to have LLC or limited liability company in it, and it has to be unique. You can't just call yourself Illinois Tech Giant LLC and expect it to fly if there's already a company with that name. So put on your creative hat and come up with something that really represents your brand. Next up, you need a registered agent. Selecting a registered agent is a critical step that might seem complicated, but is quite straightforward. This agent acts as your business's official contact responsible for receiving important legal documents on your behalf. While it may sound like something out of a spy movie, it's actually a simple yet vital role that ensures you stay on top of legal matters. You have the flexibility to act as your own registered agent, or you can appoint someone within your organization. This decision ensures that your business never misses important information or deadlines. Now, let's file those articles of organization. Filing the articles of organization is a formal way of telling the state of Illinois, here we are and we mean business. This document outlines the basics, what your business does, who's involved, and where you operate. Although it might sound complex, Illinois makes it easy, especially if you file online. This step is your business's official birth certificate, making it start in the legal and commercial world. After filing, you'll get a certificate that's like a golden ticket, proving your business exists and is recognized by the state. Once your LLC is all set up, it's time to draft an operating agreement. Even if you're flying solo in your business, drafting an operating agreement is a smart move. It's like writing the rule book for how your business operates, covering everything from how decisions are made to how profits are shared. It solidifies your business's structure, making it clear how things are done, which is crucial for maintaining order and expectations. This document won't be submitted to the state, but it's a cornerstone for your business, ensuring that you have clear guidelines for operations and decision making. With your LLC in place, the next step is getting an EIN from the IRS. The employer identification number is essentially your business's social security number, vital for all things tax related. Obtaining one from the IRS is surprisingly straightforward and free. With this number, your business can hire employees, open bank accounts, and importantly, qualify for S Corp status. It's a crucial step in legitimizing your business in the eyes of the federal government and setting up your financial infrastructure. All right, now for the final step, the transition to S Corp status. This transition is about choosing a new tax identity for your business, one that can potentially unlock significant savings and benefits under the US tax code. However, it's more than just ticking a box. It's a strategic decision that involves understanding the implications, preparing your business, and completing the necessary paperwork. Filing Form 2553 with the IRS to elect S Corp status may seem like a simple task, but it's an important moment in your business's life. This form asks for detailed information about your business, including the names and social security numbers of all owners, the business tax year, and consent from all shareholders. The complexity isn't in the form itself, but in ensuring that your business is ready for this transition. Electing to be taxed as an S Corp means your business can pass income directly to shareholders, avoiding the double taxation often experienced by C corporations. This can lead to significant tax savings, especially if you're in a position to take advantage of lower personal income tax rates. However, with great benefits come new responsibilities, right? As an S Corp, your business will need to adhere to stricter operational guidelines, including maintaining meticulous financial records, conducting annual meetings, and filing certain forms with the IRS. These requirements ensure that your business remains compliant with the IRS standards for S corporations, but they also demand a higher level of organizational discipline and and administrative oversight. Transitioning to S Corp status involves certain costs, but it's essential to view these not just as expenses, but as investments in your business's future. Initially, the primary cost is the fee to file your articles of organization with the Illinois Secretary of State, which is set at about $150. This foundational step officially establishes your LLC, paving the way for your S Corp election. 
Following this, there is an annual commitment to maintain your business's good standing in the form of a $75 report filing fee. While these are the direct costs associated with setting up and maintaining your LLC, transitioning to an S-Corp status itself does not incur a separate state fee for the election. However, it's crucial to consider the indirect costs, such as potentially hiring a tax advisor to navigate the complexities of S-Corp taxation, ensuring compliance, and maximizing your tax benefits. Moreover, once you're operating as an S-Corp, you'll need to manage payroll for yourself as an employee, which may involve additional administrative costs or fees if you use payroll services. These investments, however, are balanced by the potential tax savings and financial advantages offered by the S-Corp status, making it a worthwhile consideration for many business owners looking to optimize their operations and tax liabilities. At this point, you might be wondering if navigating these steps is worth the effort. The truth is, opting for S-Corp status is a strategic move that can offer your business significant benefits from tax savings to enhanced credibility. It signals to clients, investors, and partners that you are serious about your venture. It's about laying the groundwork for success and growth, ensuring your business is built on a solid foundation. And don't forget that if you would like to get help in starting your own S-Corporation, then make sure to sign up with Northwest Registered Agents by clicking on my affiliate link link down in the description of this video. They're professionals and they'll be able to help you out with any legal questions you have. Plus, clicking on my link doesn't cost you anything extra and it helped me support the channel. Thank you so much for watching. Till next time.